Hello, I'm uh, Wayne Saka, CEO and founder of Digital Solid State Propulsion, located in beautiful Reno, Tahoe. What we've done over the past six years is uh, completely changed the way solid propellants are used and made. We've created what we call electric solid propellants, which are a completely new type of energetic material, new type of solid propellant that will be game changing across a number of industries, uh, including aerospace, industries that don't even know they need it, like tamper-proof electronics. The material is completely insensitive to accidental ignition, can be switched on and off and throttled electrically, and yes, we can scale it up a lot larger too. We've gotten about three million, three and a half million dollars worth of SBIR contracts in over the past uh, six years. We've got about a two and a half million dollar backlog in contracts right now. Um, we uh, have about two million dollars projected for our revenues this year, three million next year. Uh, my partner Mike McPherson and I are industry type people. We know this industry. I come out of the management side. Uh, Mike comes more out of the um, formulation side. We've got a young staff. Average age is about 30. Uh, very well trained. Georgia Tech, Purdue, a lot of those guys. We have a very sophisticated client list. Uh, some of the smartest companies in the world are buying our technology. We also have a very sophisticated investor, Incutel, that gave us our seed investment it wasn't really a seed, but it was an investment last year. We have nine patents protecting our technology. What we're doing right now is transitioning our technology out of the military applications into commercial space products. The military wants us to do this because the more we sell, the less they have to pay for them too. We have an upcoming flight of a 50 kilo small satellite where we'll dem be demonstrating our agile propulsion system. And then shortly after that, we have a, a deorbit module will be flying on a CubeSat. Some of the other fun things we get to do is use our safe propellant technology to do military training that we're starting next year, uh, teamed with another company. We'll be able to take that into the entertainment industry. And some of the work we're doing on, I love this, our plasma cannon will take downhole in the oil industry and into the mining industry to break up rocks. But what we really do for new space right now is now your little satellites can actually do something. They can move around in space. The safety aspect of our propellants allow you to fly these as secondary payloads with big expensive satellites. So now you just don't have a tumbling object in space. You can move it around. You can disperse them into different orbits. You can then uh, use close proximity operations to do inspector missions, robotic repairs, that type of thing, and then you can drop them back out of orbit. The types of products we have are largely scalable in the small space side. A little micro thruster like this, a tenth of a gram of propellant can be fired once or it can be fired 30 times depending on what you want to do with it. A deorbit like module like this will be flying in about two years time. We build them up like Lego blocks so we can make large panels to big satellites too. The critical thing we're developing right now is a 2U agile propulsion module where you'll be able to get 300 meters a second of delta V from your secondary launch and then have drag makeup and ACS on that unit. The small satellite uh, market though is relatively small for us. Uh, you guys all want cheap products. That's what we're doing. We're going to enable you guys to make money with our propulsion systems. We make money by making very large panels for very large satellites, but the small satellite market will allow us to get into that. This is only the tip of the iceberg for us. Where we look at a $70 million market, that's a market we already have the products to enter into. Where we really make the money now is going into the oil and gas in mining markets. That's our biggest market. We've already been getting uh, contracts in that area to develop our safe technology for that market. The missile interceptors, the missiles, the gun systems, those are all on development paths. Uh, we're teamed with the primes. One of our unfair advantages is when Aerojet and ATK compete against each other, we're on both sides. They need our technology. Uh, the entertainment industry is really nice. They're waiting for this technology. We can do special effects that are not possible now in this industry. So again, 
we, we desperately want to get into this commercial space market to validate this technology, enable you guys to go to a lot of, uh, make a lot of money flying your small satellites into different orbits, and we'll get invited to a lot of Christmas parties that way, I hope. Anyways, um, yeah, our, our uh, technology is so cool, we can even play music through it, through it. but what you're seeing is like kilo, kilovolt or, or kilohertz uh, switching technology, so the impulses we're able to uh, provide, typically a uh, small thruster, 10, 10 uh, micronewtons here, or, I'm sorry, 10 millinewtons, those would have been micronewton pulses, whatever you want to do with it, you can do with it. We're looking for $60 uh, six million uh, to enter these commercial markets and uh, expand uh, the development of our commercial products there. Thank you. And now I'm like, okay, there'll be time now for questions from the judges. Uh, keep in mind, I forgot to mention this earlier, I'm sorry. Uh, there are no questions from the audience. This is not an audience participation event, just these nice people and the judges. Thank you. Oh, one went off. <laughs> <laughs> that was an accident, you guys. <laughs> we'll fire more of those at the tweet up tonight. Yeah, hi. Good presentation, Wayne. Um, we all had a chance to review your business plan right up, you know, the complete 30 page plus or minus uh, before, so we have a bunch of questions. Um, I had a couple of uh, quick technical questions, just to understand it more. Um, first of all, is the power you need to drive these going to be an issue for like a CubeSat application? And once they fire, uh, have you assessed what the affluence are from the the exhaust, and does that bother anybody? If the exhaust products are completely non-toxic. CO2, water, and nitrogen, that's why the entertainment industry loves this. Uh, we've also shown that, well, for certain DOD applications that uh, you need non-toxic exhausts. Uh, as far as, what was the other part you asked? I, how much power how Oh, much how much power, power yeah. Uh, we developed this technology for the hypersonic railgun uh, exo-atmosphere maneuvering system, which is extremely power challenged. I can't go into that, but uh, it makes a, a CubeSat look like it's got a lot of power on board. You mentioned it's scalable, but it, it looks like it's scalable by having dozens or hundreds of the small modules. Well, it depends what you want to do with it. You okay. saw a, a large rocket motor firing 200 pounds of thrust, and then you saw, made small ones. It's, ex, it's the most versatile solid propellant that's ever been developed. Could you talk a little bit more then about how you might use this propulsion technology for larger satellites um, and some of the trade-offs a satellite operator or a satellite manufacturer would, would make in choosing your technology over, so, you know, uh, ion propulsion or traditional? It's you know. not necessarily going to be a, a choice one over the other. It's going to be an additional option they have to do different things with their satellites or a redundancy level that, unfortunately, when there's excess payload on a launch, the satellite provider may choose to strap these on to give the big satellite a longer duration rather than fly small satellites with it, that type of option. Big panels for pointing if your uh, 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 momentum wheels fails, those types of things. But really for the big satellites, uh, something I didn't have a chance to mention, we've actually, for the oil industry, we've created electric liquid propellants now, and we're going to spin those back into uh, the aerospace industry for catalyst-free monopropellants. Again, they're green, they're easy to use. Getting rid of that catalyst bed for a monopropellant really changes your options for in-space propulsion. But that's just, that's one of the pipeline of, pipelines of products we have coming out with this platform technology. 
for the for the money that you're raising, is it an investment in your company that's been in business for a long time, or are you effectively spinning out a subsidiary that you, is, is where the investment is That's negotiable. Going to? There's uh, the oil side. There, there's there's some dispute on that right now. We have. Uh, Somebody on the oil side, and there's there's some interest in spinning that oil side out. But the investment I'm talking about this group for is primarily to uh, do some of the commercialization of the aerospace products. So in that case, can you just give a, a quick background about the profitability of DSSP as a whole? Maybe. Well, we've been putting all the money back in. We're, we bootstrapped this thing, so we don't. I haven't been taking profit uh, out of it. We buy equipment. We uh, keep the employees happy with that uh, money. But uh, you know where we actually will make our money, since the government has paid for the development of these products, when we start selling them commercially, they will be very profitable because we don't have development costs to make up for. Right there, they're profitable. So unlike everybody else that needs to make up for, for that, we have the, the government paying for the most advanced development of these systems. Uh, and then when we start selling them, we just make money on it. That's how the SBIR program works. We own the intellectual property. We own the profits going forward. They're not taking that stake. So that's, that's where we make money. And of course, going to commercial, we're not stuck with 7.5%, 8% profit in the government. Uh, could you maybe uh, um, inform us a little bit more about uh, you're, you're raising $6 million now. Um, what do you think the total capital is going to be required to get to break even for the company? I know it's tough because you've got the different market segments out there. Have you looked at that? or it, it, the, the next big uh, hurdle is when we, the commodity demand goes up for the oil and mining, uh, and we actually have to build the oxidizer plant, but uh, our oil company customer kind of shrugged the amount of money that that would cost off as peanuts. So um, we're not, if, if the commodity demand is there, the customers that want this will be there to back it. So are you going to have to build your own sales team? Or are you going to, Well, that's another big um, swallower of capital? On, on that side of it, we'll be uh, working directly with that customer as a strategic investor. Their, their only concern with selling to other oil companies will be that they're, we're meeting their demand. They're funding the... Uh, the demonstration uh, next year, so we'll feed right in there. Otherwise, for our sales force, uh, what, what the basic model for our company is, we do the development, and then when it gets to high rate manufacturing or that commercial side, we'll, uh, we've already had offers to team for sales forces in the traditional aerospace business. They want our products to sell. They have the customers already. We can give it to it and focus on what we do best. Yeah, Wayne, I uh, looked at your 2011 results in your, your business operations, and I, I noticed a couple of things that just seemed a little unusual to me. And one was that with the number of employees you had and the revenues and all that, the revenue per employee was like a very low number compared to what I'm used to in the small space business area. But at the same time, you spent a very high fraction of your revenues on IRAD, you know, the internal research and development last year in 2011, but you were still profitable. Very high, very high percentage, and you were still profitable. <coughs> and I'm just curious how that uh, is. It, does it mean you have a lot of technicians and they don't cost you much to do what you're doing? Or no, it means how does I that fired my financial officer three months ago, and oh. those financials <laughs> were the, kind of what we pieced together. Um, yeah, he, he's gone. And uh, what I can tell you right now, we're, we're stable. We've got good cash flow through the new year anyways. We're, we're, we're going through that. But sometimes uh, you trust people that you shouldn't be. And uh, I, I noticed, I was noticing other things. My main thing was the cash flow that I was seeing wasn't working out. But uh, he's gone, and I'm saving a lot of money now because my junior accountant's handling it, and she's doing just great. <laughs> 